Today, I'm gonna be going through the steps to create a Python game from scratch. Now, you might ask, how exactly am I qualified to determine whether or not this is a project for beginners? Well, I've never coded in Python before, let alone touch a computer. So technically, I'm a beginner myself. There is no way anything can go wrong in this scenario. A few moments later. Are you kidding me? Now, we're not just going to create any game. I'm going to show you how to create a customized game that you can use to prank your friends and family. Recently, I've been staying with my family for the summer as part of this long reunion that we decided to do before COVID hit. Unfortunately, that also meant being the butt of many of my cousin's jokes. <laughs> So I decided to take revenge, I, I mean pull a prank, by designing a Python game with him in it. Now it couldn't just be any game, it had to be something diabolical. My plan is to create a game where my cousin is the main character. The user will use the arrow keys to navigate him flying through the air and dodging the tomatoes and cabbages that are flung towards him. And if he doesn't, boom, the tomatoes explode all over him. I even consulted some of my friends before finalizing the design. Hey Jason, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Okay, so here's the idea. The the tomato cabbage is gonna hit hit stick figure. And then boom. I think this is like the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Okay, so some people don't get the genius behind this idea, so we're just gonna move on from that. Finally, I decided to get started by laying the groundwork. What better way to get started than to just start coding? This is a tip for all you new grads out there. Planning is for Okay, so I found an article that talks about building a Python game from scratch. Pie charm? That sounds like a snake charmer. Uh, okay, yes, 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 yeah, Trojan horse, virus, whatever, yeah. What the f Okay, let's try this again. Pip, 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 pip. Where the heck can I download pip? Oh my god, this is taking so long. Okay, so I fast forwarded through some of this because it took me an embarrassingly long time to literally just get everything set up. Basically, I downloaded PyCharm, pip, pygame, and made sure that everything was located in the correct directory. So now we're ready to get started coding. Let's set up the basic framework first, making a circle. I just set this up using coordinates, here and here. There are a lot of layers of abstraction being used, which is what makes Pygame so cool. The idea behind the circle is that it will eventually represent our character, aka my cousin. So we've created a circle object that will be within the character grouping, which is shown right here, right there. We also need to be able to move the circle based on the user input. Lucky for me, I don't even really need to know Python for this to work, so good thing I'm a coder. Moving an object, hmm, okay, so it looks like I can use Pygame's keyboard shortcuts to make an object move based on the user pressing the arrows up and down, input output. Now this is cool and all, but we want to have random objects flying in the air and we want them to hit our character. So it took too long, so I just went ahead and built a basic version of the thing. Good thing I'm a coder. Here's the enemy object and the player object. The basic actions have been built in, and then we have this loop. This is where the actual gameplay happens. So we end the game if the player quits or if they get hit by an enemy object. So you can see here that the character and enemy objects are in the gameplay, and as soon as it hits your character, it'll stop. Well, it'll explode, and then it'll stop. The original article provided PNG images. Pung, pung, ping. PNG images for these characters. But as you saw in my amazing design earlier, we need to grab a picture of my cousin to really make the game pop. The problem is I don't really have a reason to take a picture of him without him getting suspicious. So I'm just gonna tell him that I need a superhero stance photo for a school project. And joke's on him because I'm not in school right now, so. There we go, yep, perfect, perfect. Next, I had to remove the background using the Canva app. Now I'm gonna try to upload this into our game. 
and as you can see, the game just keeps crashing because the picture is too big. Thankfully, I have a Photoshop subscription I forgot to cancel. So I'm just gonna resize the image in Photoshop. Okay, so let's try running the code again. I uploaded the image, nice. Okay, so now we can play as my cousin, but we still only have missiles flying at him. We want to change this, so we're throwing tomatoes and cabbages at him. Because the code is already put in place, we just need to replace the image. So here I am replacing the image. We can just add them into the enemy group. Let's try running it again. It looks like it only loads the cabbage, so we'll need to create a whole new enemy. Okay, so pause for a second here. Clearly, we should be making an interface called enemy. And then we'll have two objects, our cabbage and tomato object that implement this interface. Or we could even do something like have a generic enemy object and then have a parameter in the constructor where it takes in an image and we'll have our tomato image and our cabbage image. But who cares about coding the right way? This is the quickest way to do it right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. Tip for you new grads. We're just gonna create an object called, wait for it, enemy two. I know, genius so original, which has the exact same functionality as the original enemy class, except we upload a cabbage PNG instead of a tomato. And look at that. Now we have two different kinds of vegetables, vegetation, veggies. And the last piece of the puzzle is the exploding tomato. So I tried this earlier with a GIF, and unfortunately GIFs are not compatible with Pygame. So we'll have to upload several exploding images of different sizes and then render them onto the game in the exact position the player is hit. Okay, so I think the final product is finally finished. Now for the big reveal. Are you tired of your cousin flying in just to make fun of you at family gatherings? Do you secretly want to get revenge on all the haters that call you names and piss on your dreams? Yes, definitely! Introducing the Exploding Tomato. Now, you can play a very complex game as your nemesis. All you have to do is avoid the exploding vegetation. And now here's a real testimony from people who have played the game. Hey guys, I recently tried Exploding Tomatoes and it was, uh, it was a really great game. I really liked the tomatoes and how they exploded. I highly recommend that you try it and uh, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jesse. Recently tried Exploring to Exploding Tomatoes and it was off awesome. It was awesome. If you're a serious gamer, you should definitely check out this game. Is that good enough? I mean, I didn't really care for the game that much, but I just want to get paid. I mean, you can cut out this part and just use the beginning, right? All right, solid. All right, I'll send you an email with the invoice. Thanks. So now that we've gotten that over with, I will be showing the game to my cousin and getting his reaction live. Let's see what he thinks. Okay, so what do you think? Mm. Yeah, looks great. Do you feel scared, excited, nervous, angry, annoyed? I guess. Okay, so obviously he loved it. We just have to take a couple of his reviews off because the manager saw some of his reviews on Yelp and decided that it wasn't really gonna fit in the direction that we were moving forward with the app. So any publicity is good publicity, am I right?